Hello, everyone. Welcome to the session called National Association of Intercollegiate Athletics, NAIA, Eligibility and Updates. My name is Han Lu. I am the Education USA advisor based in Toronto. Um, today, we're really glad to welcome you to join us um, for this event and for this session. Good evening or good afternoon if you're on the West Coast. Um, our wonderful speakers from NAIA will provide up-to-date information on the NAIA eligibility process. The session is for anyone who's considering becoming a student athlete in the United States. Now, please allow me to introduce our wonderful speakers today. Um, Kayla Smith is the Manager of Customer Relations in the NAIA Eligibility Center. Kayla has been with the NAIA for a little under two years. Please say hi to our wonderful students, parents, and educators, Kayla. Hello, everyone. Great. And Jared Russell is the Customer Success Manager of International Credential Evaluations. Jerica has been working for the NAIA for a little under a year. Hi, everyone. Wonderful. Without much ado, um, please um, begin your presentation. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to send your questions in the chat box. And if we have any time left, um, we can address some of the questions. Awesome. Or you can go to their booth and ask mm -hmm. questions after this presentation. Yep, for sure. All right. So as she said, my name is Kayla Smith um, and I work in the NAIA Eligibility Center as a manager of eligibility services in our customer relations department. Um, and tonight I'm going to be talking to you with our a little bit about opportunities to play sports in the NAIA as well as how our eligibility process works. And Jerrica, you want to talk a little just a little briefly about NCRED? Yes. So I am Jerrica and I work with NCRED. We're a partner of the NAIA. So NCRED is a credential evaluation company um, and the NAIA requires all of their international student athletes to get a credential evaluation before they can get their eligibility. So our service offers uh, consistent and accurate like GPA calculations, or if you're transferring from a university in Canada to a university in the United States, we also offer like for the credits to transfer as well um, as accurately as possible. All right, so the NAIA is considered to be the experts in the business of small college athletics. We develop champions of character through our core values, which are integrity, respect, responsibility, sportsmanship, and servant leadership. The NAIA has more than 77,000 student athletes at colleges and universities across our 251 member schools. Student athletes have the chance to compete in 27 national championships, not only do student athletes get to keep playing their sport at the collegiate level, but they do it while receiving a portion of the more than $800 million in athletic scholarships offered at NAIA colleges and universities every year. So the NAIA has institutions across the United States and Canada, so there's practically no boundary to where you can go and participate in college athletics while receiving that four-year institution degree. And I did want to take a second to point out um, which NAI schools are located in Canada. So as you can see, the two schools are University of British Columbia, which is located in Vancouver, and then the University of Victoria, which is located in Victoria. And for this presentation, I pulled some data um, that I found. So since our eligibility center opened its doors in 2010, we have had over 2,600 2, student athletes from Canada receive an eligibility decision from us. Um, and the top five sports that Canadian students register for are baseball, women's soccer, men's golf, softball, and men's soccer. Some of the many reasons to choose an NAI in school include having an opportunity for a more intimate learning setting as our schools are tight knit and allow for closer interaction and stronger relationships with those on campus. We also focus heavily on character development and want to make sure that we are not only developing the athlete, but the student as well. Statistically speaking, not everyone is going to be able to compete at division one institution. The NAIA is a great way to earn scholarships to keep playing while receiving an excellent college education at a four-year university. 
The NAI offers the opportunity to compete in a wide variety of championship sport and travel across the country to compete on a national stage. And I'll take a second here to pause so you can look at the 27 sports um, that we offer for our championships. Um, and then we also, um, in addition to the championship sports, the NAI also recognizes emerging and invitational sports. So these are programs that many of our campuses have started sponsoring, but have not yet had the numbers of competitive structure to become a championship sport. Um, so these are the current individual or invitational and emerging sports. Um, beach volleyball is actually going to be in its second year of invitation, I believe, this year. So we will start issuing decisions for those that want to compete in beach volleyball for this upcoming year. Another advantage of playing for an NAIA school is how the recruiting rules work in high school. So forget what you know about recruiting rules because the NAIA is different. NAIA recruiting rules don't restrict when or how often you and college coaches can communicate. The NAIA's approach allows you and the coach to develop rapport so both of you feel confident you're making the right choice and can fully explore what the NAIA schools have to offer to you both athletically and academically. It is also important to note that the national letters of intent are not legal binding, which means a student has the ability to, choose, to change their school after shine, signing for a scholarship. There's also no recruiting calendar in the NAIA, so take advantage of this. Recruiting can take place year round for NAIA coaches, which means any time a coach is not in season for his or her sport is a great time for the coach to be out evaluating prospective talent. If you need assistance with the recruiting process, we recommend that you visit the NCSA, which is Next College Student Athlete, as they are our official recruiting partner. They offer tools to help you with the process of college athletics recruitment. We also have a link um, to our Find Your Path uh, section on our website in our booth, so feel free to come and check that out as well. So before you can step onto the playing field, you have to make sure that you are eligible. Anyone who wants to play at an NAIA school for the first time will need to register with the NAIA Eligibility Center at playnaia.org. Once you register, you'll need to provide some basic information so we can send you an email confirmation, and then you're on your way. First, get started with your online profile by giving the NAIA some general information about yourself, such as who you are, where you're from, and what sports you plan to play in the NAIA, just basic background information. The register to play phase is also when you will receive your six digit ECID number, which will be a very important number um, throughout our process. So there are fees um, for the eligibility center. So if you're just graduating high school, your fee is going to be $90 for the eligibility center. If you graduate high school and then take a break between high school and college enrollment, it's $135. And then once you have attended college after high school graduation, the fee become, becomes $150. So it's also a plus to get registered soon after high school graduation, so that it's just the $90 fee. So I'm now going to give an overview of the entire eligibility process for freshmen that are going to be competing at an NAIA institution. So as I mentioned before, the first step is the registration. Once the account is created, email is confirmed, and payment is made, you will move to the complete your profile stage. In this stage, the student will input all of your academic and athletic history. The information in this section will determine which documents will be required in order for the student to receive the eligibility decision. Once the profile is submitted, you'll have a current tasks list on the profile to help guide you with what you need to do in order to become eligible. Once all necessary documents are received, you will go through the review process and receive a decision of eligible or not eligible. And before Jerrica gets into INCRED and your international documents, I wanted to take a quick second to talk about college transcripts that are from colleges in the United States. So if you go to a college in the United States after high school, um, and then you decide you wanna come to an NAIA school to compete, there's a couple different ways that we accept those transcripts. So the first one would be for the college to upload the transcript through the Play NAIA portal. Now, a lot of times, if it's not an NAIA school, they might not use our portal, and that's okay. We have two other ways that we accept them. So the one, the second one would be have it sent electronically through a third-party transcript service, and the ones that we accept are National Student Clearinghouse, Parchment, and Credential Solutions. 
And if they're being sent to us, they have to go to the documents at NAIA.org email address. And all of this is going to be on the profile. So don't stress now if you don't write it down. It'll all be there for the student um, in their resources. And then the last option would be to have it mailed in a school sealed envelope to our address. And then also quickly, if an ACT or SAT score is needed for your decision, which I will touch on um, after Jerrica goes into her in cred section, um, they have to come directly from the testing service. So you can save money by when you take it, you can input our code, which is the 9876, um, to have it sent to us right when you get your test scores back. And you can also see on the screen, oops, let me get back there, the um, test score requirement. So most of these would probably be taken after 2019. So it's going to be the 18 for the ACT and then a 970 for the SAT. And I will touch on that in a second too, of if it's needed or not. Jerrica, go ahead. Okay, so for NCRED, um, just a little overview of NCRED. Uh, we verify um, documents, as I stated previously. Um, it authenticates all the records uh, and aligns with U.S. institutions. So basically, we just make sure that if you're graduating from high school, it's comparable to the exact same high school graduation within the U.S. Or if you were taking college courses, those credits transferring to classes that you can also get credit for in the U.S. as well. And we also provide um, evaluations for NAIA eligibility. Next slide. Okay, so to register for NCRED, um, as stated previously, all students would have to go through NCRED in order to receive an eligibility decision. So you would just want to go to www.ncredevals.org. This link is also located in the booth as well. Um, so. Feel free to write it down now or visit our booth after this. And um, you can complete the uh, application process all from your computer. And that includes uploading records electronically. So we're a bit different than the NAIA. We do not require students to have their institutions send us documents directly. If you have the physical official copy of your transcripts, you're more than welcome to upload them to your account during the registration process. And this just kind of shows the website once you register and you're logged in. Um, you'll be able to upload all your transcripts there, as I stated. And then the next section will be the school you want to send it to. It'll go to the NAIA because when you register for Play NAIA, you'll get your ECID number, which is very important when setting up your NCRED account because that's how we know that you're an NAIA athlete and we can link the two accounts. So you'll want to put that in there. And if you need the evaluation for admissions purposes as well, there will be a section in the registration form that'll ask for the school and for your admissions counselor's name and you can add more than one in institution so if you are thinking about applying to several schools there's no limit to the amount of schools that you can send your evaluation to for for free like that'll be all packaged within the cost of in credit evaluations and for we have we offer three different evaluation types so Usually no one coming right out of high school will need a high school comparability. This is only for Canadian students. If you went to a junior college in the United States and now you're transferring to an NAIA school, um, a high school comparability, the cheapest option is what's best because the NAIA only needs to see that you graduated high school. They don't need a GPA calculation from your high school documents since you've already been in the U.S. Um, but for First term freshman, you will need a basic high school evaluation, which is $95. This offers a GPA calculation of your final high school uh, transcript so you can get an eligibility decision with the NAIA. And if you took any like upper secondary courses in high school, but usually course by course evaluations are for students who have already had post secondary enrollment. So this will allow your credits to transfer to a US institution and it'll give the NAI a breakdown of all of your classes with a more accurate look at your GPA. Some students want course by course evaluations for their high school credits just to see how their GPA breaks down. But for the NAI eligibility, it is not 
um, a necessity, you will need a basic high school evaluation though. And then we also offer expedited services for an additional fee. I would like to point out that standard service is around 10 to 12 business days during the summer. That's peak season for us. So it takes a little bit longer, more so 10 to 15 business days to receive a completed evaluation. So if you're thinking about going to an NAI school, keep that in mind because the, the closer we get to summer, the longer standard service takes. But if you would like your evaluations completed sooner, we do offer two-day service, which is an additional $150 or five-day service, which is an additional 75. And we have an option called certified copies. This is not required for the NAIA because they will get your transcripts um, automatically. But if you are going to a school that requires your transcripts to be authenticated by an evaluation service, we can do that as well. We offer that service, but it'll be uh, an additional $20 to the original cost. Perfect. And I do want to point out just they are separate fees. So the NAIA fee and the INCRED are separate fees. So they don't cover each other. They're separate. Thanks, Jerrica. Okay, so now I'm going to just talk about freshman requirements. So if you graduate high school with a 2.3 GPA or higher on a 4.0 scale, you can become eligible with just that. If you have below the 2.3, you can become eligible by meeting two of the following three, which would be the GPA of a 2.0, which is again on a 4.0 scale, qualifying test score, which you can see right below, and then if you rank in the top 50% of your class. So there's two options, the 2.3, that's all you need. If you have the 2.0 or qualifying test score and, and rank in the top 50% of your class, you can also become eligible through that as well. Um, I'm not gonna get into transfer requirements just because I believe a majority of people here are in high school or about to graduate. Um, but if you do have questions about transfer or anything like that, feel free to reach out to us and we can we can go through that as well. So I wanted to take a second to touch on a few of the differences between the NCAA and the NAIA when it comes to eligibility and recruitment. So the main difference is that we do not look at core courses in the NAIA unlike the NCAA. The only thing we look at for freshman eligibility would be the high school GPA and, as I said, potentially the class rank and test score if needed. Another difference would be that an eligibility decision is not needed to receive scholarships or practice. The decision is only needed to actually compete on campus once the season begins, and this would include scrimmages and exhibitions. So as Jerrica said, our summertime gets busy, um, but you do have time. It's just we urge you to start early um, to avoid delays and potentially missing games early on in the season. A few tips, um, like I just said, start the process early. Coaches look for initiative. As soon as you graduate and even before you graduate, I would get your account started if you know you're gonna be competing at an NAIA school. Um, Cause the earlier that you have the eligibility decision, you can pass that on to your coaches, let them know that right when you get there, you're gonna be ready to go. Um, if you need a test score for eligibility, enter our code when registering for the test to avoid having to pay for it later on. Um, so just type in that 9876 when you're taking the the um, ACT or SAT to get that sent to us right away. And then also suggest that you're checking your profile one to two times per week to make sure you're staying on top of things and if anything else is needed, because it happens, we get all we need, find out that we need something else. And if you're not checking your profile, you might not know that. So just make sure that you're keeping an eye on it and you're keeping, um, you know, just on top of it. Um, let's see here. Yeah, we just want to avoid delays because you don't want to get to August and you have a game coming up and you're trying to get a decision in two days. A lot of times that's not going to happen. We just have so many students coming through our process at that time. And especially with an international students, you have to go through NCRED as well. So just make sure that you're starting earlier, um, getting stuff done. And please reach out to us if you have questions. Um, our contact us form is on our page um, on the Plan AIA website. Please use that to reach out to us. Um, we are very quick at getting back to people. So I'm in our customer relations department. So a lot of times you'll actually be talking to me via email or phone. And then Jerrica, you'll be talking to her um, through via phone or email if you're reaching out to InCred. So you'll get a real person. We're here to help you. Um, and yeah, please let us know if you have questions.
see if there's See one question. For the great presentation, we do have a few questions um, yeah. in the chat box. The first question is: Could you please clarify how high academic achievers are exempt from scholarship limits, and what GPA is considered a high achiever? Is there a guide for them uh, for Ontario GPA calculation? Because Canadian schools don't um, grade students um, based on the four point grade skills. Yeah. So. I'll speak on the scholarship part first. So unfortunately, we just don't have a ton of information about scholarships because those are all handled on campus. So it's it's a school by school basis. I would suggest that if there's a school that you're interested in or um, just reach out to them, they're more than like they're more than happy to help you with that. I just don't have a ton of information on scholarship limits because it's not something that we deal with in the eligibility center. Jerrica, do you have anything to add for the GPA calculation? Yes. So okay. um, students from Ontario, um, the GPA calculation, so from a 80 ranging to 100 is an A, 70 to 79 is a B, 56 to 69 is a C, and then anything 50 and below is a D or an F. Um, but yes, so the that's how it converts to U.S. Uh, a 4.0 scale. Yeah. And another thing I would add, too, is INCRED is the only international credential service that we accept. So if you have gone through something else, if you're looking to go through something else, just know that it, it we are not able to use those evaluations. They have to be done through INCRED. Um, and it's beneficial for the student. They can just give them their ECID number. You don't have to worry about sending the evaluations to us. It just if you give the ECID number to INCRED, they will pair it to the student's profile. And we can, the good thing is once you register, we can start your review process prior to receiving the final INCRED evaluation. We just aren't able to post decisions until we receive the final INCRED evaluation. So it's, like I've said multiple times, I would just get started as soon as possible um, just to avoid delays because as Jerrica said too, I mean, summer, it gets crazy with the amount of students we have coming through. So the earlier you can you can start this, the more likely you won't run into de to delays in the fall. Thank you for your answer. Um, another question from Tony Ginko asked, uh, can you send us a copy of this excellent presentation? Uh, of course, so this session is being recorded and after the event, we will share the recording with all of you. Um, so if you have any questions, we do have a few minutes left. Um, you can ask questions. Our wonderful um, speakers can answer them. And after the session ends at 7.30, feel free to go to NAIA's booth and ask more questions or reach out to them and leave your contact details so that they can reach out to you later, even after this event. Um, the other thing I want to point out is that a few of the institutions from the states participating at this fair are NAIA members. So you can find out about that by uh, checking out the tags and filter institutions um, that has a tag that says NAIA. I do see Another a question, question from Michelle. Yeah, perfect. I, so we base our international student and domestic student based off of where you graduate high school. So if you graduate high school in Canada, you would be considered an international student and would need to go through NCRAD. If you graduate high school in the United States, though, you just go through our regular process, which doesn't involve NCRAD. Mostly the same. It just doesn't have NCRAD involved. Um, but yeah, it's all based off of where you graduate high school. So for the GPA calculation, um, it depends on which transcripts uh, the student chooses to submit. Most students only submit their final transcript, and that's what the GPA is based on because the NAI wants to know your 12th grade final GPA for eligibility decisions. Do you differentiate between courses offered at different levels? Jerrica? Do you have an answer for that? For the do you differentiate differentiate between courses offered at different levels? 
Um, I do not have a specific answer for that one. I do not believe so. As long as the institution is considered post-secondary, it would be the same throughout, but I would have to check on that. Um, unfortunately, I'm not an evaluator, so I do not have a specific answer for that question. Yeah, but feel free to add that in the contact us. Like we will get that answered for you too. Um, and then for the citizenship in both countries, it's it's just based off of where you graduate high school. <clears throat> so even if you have citizenship in both, it, if you graduate high school in Canada, you would be considered an international student for our purposes. Um, I want to add a few more words. Uh, if you're interested in getting to know more about scholarships, especially sports scholarships, feel free to go to NAIA's booth or go to Education USA Canada's booth where we can answer your questions in detail. Um, the thing about GPA is that um, to apply to an American post-secondary institution, you need to show all four years of transcripts. So um, doesn't matter whether NAIA take, uh, take consideration about your uh, scores in grade 11 and 12, um, both of the grades or all four, grade, all four years, you will need to submit all four year scores. But yeah, feel free to stop by our booth. We'll be there um, for the next hour and a half. So if you have questions, come come talk to us. Cool. Oh, I think we good. Awesome. Another Thank question you. our students usually ask is that how do we know which uh, sport has an AA scholarship offered? Again, yeah, I would definitely reach out to the school for that. I don't believe it says specifically on the website when you go to the sports, which schools offer that. Um, but the best option would be to start contacting schools um, and figure out which one's going to be the best fit for that. Because it just it differs so much on a school by school basis. So we don't have like generic information about that. Any other questions? We have two more minutes left. And if you have like specific situations too, and you'd rather not talk about it, like if you just want to contact us about your specific situation, please do. Um, we're, we answer emails and calls all day, every day. So we're happy to, to help with that. Okay, we got one question from Raymond. Are there any differences during recruitment stages? If you're referring to like differences between NAIA and NCAA, um, there definitely are. Let me get um, big thing is that we encourage students and coaches to begin a relationship early on so that students can determine if it's going to be the right fit for them. Um, that's that's a huge thing for us. We want to make sure that students are going to the right school that fits their academic and athletic needs. Um, you can have direct contact with NAIA coaches. There's really no communication restrictions between the NAIA coaches and high school um, athletes. You can connect via texting, email, phone, Twitter, any other social media. Um, and there's no recruiting calendar restrictions as well. That's a big one. All right. Thank you so much for your wonderful presentation and your answers to the questions are very informative. Um, we're about to end this session, but if you have more questions, feel free to visit both Derek and Kayla at their booth. 
um, called NAIA. You can also ask general questions about studying in the U.S. at Education USA Canada's booth. Thank you for joining us. And we have other sessions going on. And feel free to visit other institutions. Thank you.